Well, seeing the hour of 11.30 and being in Harrisburg, we want to be efficient on time, so we will get started. I want to welcome everyone. Good morning for joining us this morning. Uh, these are members of the Policy Committee's Task Force standing behind me. I'm Representative Kerry Benninghoff. I do chair the House Majority Policy Committee here in the House of Representatives. Uh, the House of Representatives and Policy Committee today is officially launching something we call Pen Save, a new initiative to find ways to save taxpayer dollars by cutting government waste and trying to lower our costs. The, efficient, pardon me, the initiative stands for savings, accountability, value, and efficiency. Year after year, state government budget processes have resulted in government growing and spending more. Every administration, every political party has been a contributor to that. You can see by the charts to my left and right. It's time to put the brakes on this. We're launching Penn Save because we believe the state government budget process should begin not with conversations about spending and higher taxes, but by first looking for ways to reduce government waste and cut unnecessary costs. That should be step number one every time. Look for duplicate services and more efficient ways to run state government and what state government should be involved with. Before taxpayers are asked to take a pay cut in order to send more money here to Harrisburg, state government first needs to be accountable to those taxpayers by ensuring that every dollar is spent efficiently and every practical option for reducing cost is investigated. Think about it, in a $30 billion budget, we can be confident that there are plenty of opportunities to find efficiencies and improve how government works. We just need to look, and more importantly, be willing to do so. A number of representatives, over 17, are on this task force. My Republican colleagues stand behind me, and they have been appointed to help spearhead these efforts, many of them with tremendous ideas. They are leaders within our own caucus, for standing for fiscal responsibility and stewardship. And I am looking forward to working side by side with them, and we've already got started. Over the next several weeks, this group grow, work group will effectively be researching several potential cost-saving measures across state government, including possible state agency or program consolidation, unaddressed audit findings, government procurement policies, and so-called corporate welfare, as well as overall waste, fraud, and system abuse. We will be focusing our research on the biggest budget cost drivers overall, which you can see to the pie chart on my right. Human services, education, corrections, and state government in general. However, no idea is off limits. We'll be asking tough questions. Do we really need two state transportation agencies to do what one agency could possibly do? What are the benefits to continuing that particular program? And maybe simply just asking questions like why are things are still being done the same way they were 20, 30 years ago? These are the questions we should be asking and need to be asking year after year to ensure we are operating as efficiently as possible. Private business, homeowners do this type of financial self-analysis annually and in many cases more often. We will also look internally within the legislature. We have and will continue to lead by example in this regard. We will also be extending an invitation to the Wolf Administration to join us in building upon the existing Go Time initiative and finding even more ways of saving money within state agencies. We need to look forward to working in a bipartisan manner to get good, creative ideas accomplished for the Commonwealth. Lastly, and probably most importantly, in addition to the work we will be doing and be very busy at it here in Harrisburg, we're encouraging the public to participate in PennSave by submitting their ideas and strategies for how to make government more efficient. Two of my colleagues just iterated those dialogues they've had with people who work within state government and their own constituents. The opportunities are out there. Our constituents are the customers, and they know better often than us about ways state government they feel can run more efficiently and can make some real improvements and save costs. Pennsylvanians know where cost savings can be found and we're looking forward to them joining us in our cause. If they want to participate, they can submit ideas on our website, www.pagoppolicy.com. In addition to that, we will have hand cards available within our legislative districts and throughout our communities. Looking for ways to trim unnecessary spending and making government more efficient is something that should be taking place not just this year, 
but every year. While it is easier for some to turn to higher taxes to address our budget shortfalls and much more difficult to find real savings, we believe that is our job as lawmakers to work in the best interests of Pennsylvania's taxpayers. Before I conclude, I want to take a minute to thank and praise the work of our Appropriations Committee and our Chairman, Bill Adolph. He and they have worked very hard and he has a fantastic record of stewardship of the taxpayer dollars throughout his time as a chairman. They are hosting here as, as we presently talk. But he is only one person and that is only one committee and they and he alone cannot do this by themselves. We will be working hand in hand with the Appropriations Committee and Chairman Adolph as we launch this initiative. Their staff has been a big asset to us already. I like to kind of look at this as a new budget address of sorts, a hit of the reset button. We need to start state budget processes over and this time in the best interest of the taxpayers and looking for savings first before new dollars be generated through new tax increases. We will open for questions. I will ask you to take note of the separate uh, billboards to my right and left. This is your state budget. You can see by its own demonstration where the lion's share of the money goes. This is our logo. And to my left is the rising cost of government. Remember, any taxes that go up, they never go back down. We need to be prudent. With that, I will take questions as well as the committee members. Anybody in particular? You, besides the uh, two and not in uh, the Turnpike Commission, are there some other ideas that you already know that you're going to be taking a look at? Uh, we are actually in, in a dialogue with um, Auditor General De Pasquale. We're looking at some of his audit findings. I think that he's worked very hard on those. Uh, they should not be ignored. Uh, we're going to continue those dialogues. Many of my colleagues up here have individual members within their own communities who have identified different areas where they feel there could be cost savings. I believe we have the responsibility to be more prudent. As I said, nothing's off the table and we will look at all areas and we encourage your readers, your listeners, and those watching today's program to share those ideas with us, uh, both on the websites, they can contact our local offices, and I have a very willing uh, group of members here to my left and right. Diane, do you have a uh, target in mind of how much you're looking to save or that you're trying to reach or is it just a endless hope for savings. Well, first of all, every dollar possible. But I think you have to be realistic. And the reality for us is that uh, no area will not be looked at. We will be um, open-minded to those types of things. Sometimes I think you can get so focused on a set number that you lose the broader perspective. Uh, I see this not only as a fiscal uh, management tool, but a way of making government efficient overall and deciding what all government should be involved with and government should be. So there's some policy changes and if need be, uh, legislative initiatives may come out of this. We will make those changes. Some of them may be within um, the departments themselves. Some of it has to do with contracts, how we lease equipment, all those types of things. I'm not going to be focused on a dollar. I want to be able to get a time frame together to be in tandem with the appropriations hearing and as we get into the real um, meat of the budget debates in May that we'll have this information available to both appropriations committees. This has been a mantra for the uh, GOP for a long time. Uh, and yet everyone's saying there isn't anything in there. You know, do, do you still believe, I mean, I know you guys have been looking at cuts and you, you guys are holding the line on this stuff. So is there really anything in there? Well, first of all, I would say that the taxpayers have to do this on a daily basis. I just recently learned of a friend of mine being laid off from his job. They're making serious decisions. Obviously not going to buy another car. If the washing machine's making noise, I'm going to try to fix it and keep it going. I think the government needs to do the same thing. I always think that there's an opportunity. Again, at $30.3 billion, there's got to be efficiencies that can be uh, better instituted. I think the governor, by his own omission, is looking through his own plan of savings. I think that's what the general public expects from us. It's not a Republican-Democrat issue, frankly. And I've got to tell you, many of my colleagues standing here tell me that they hear from lots of members and nobody identifies themselves by their party. But these are people that work within state government who have said, I need to tell you, we could do this better. How we purchase products, where we purchase them from. Is it better to patronize locals and try to get something more efficiently on time? I think there's lots of room there. Other questions? Jan? Um, you know, Governor Wolf has said, you know, he saw Perk as being redundant, and so he 
move that into the Office of Budget. You have members of your commission up here to file a lawsuit, you know, challenging that. So what? Why should the public think that this is going to be any kind of that this is really going to make a difference? Well. We're very serious about it, and I think that the public, sh more importantly, has expectations for us to do this and can continue. And some of these people standing here have been doing this throughout their careers. You know, I've tried to focus on these types of things, but we want to make a collective effort that is not necessarily as partisan, but the reality is we want people in our districts, we want department heads being able to step up and say, you know, I could do this a little bit better. We want them to feel encouraged to do that. And I'm more than willing to work with the governor's office. He and I had this dialogue in December about looking for efficiencies in government. At the end of the day, I think we all have a responsibility to do that. Young man in the back, I'm sorry. What areas uh, are you looking to you know, find the, the, the cost cutting and the spending um, more than others based off of what your research Well, obviously, if you look at the pie chart, there are larger portions of our budget. Uh, and I want to reiterate, it's not just about saving dollars, but of finding efficient ways to do services within state government or whether we should even be involved with some of these things. Uh, I know as a Republican caucus, uh, that's one of the things that we've tried to do, whether it's some printing costs or trying to get an outside vendor to do that because it's more efficient. You know, when I first came into the legislature, we had these proverbial leases that went on and on and on for a copier that after five years, you paid five times the price of the copier. You know, we're looking at those types of things and how we can do that better. We have four major areas state government, um, education, health care, and we are trying to uh, look at those, but they are broad terms, and we will get into any area that we feel. And I think that's where uh, the reports that uh, De Pasquale has put out will be effective. We've already had those dialogues, and we'll continue to work on those. Do you think you trim enough that that could avoid what is being proposed by the Democratic side? Uh, that is not our goal, to be a counterbalance to that. Our goal is to be efficient. And again, as I said, this is not just about today. I think it's a good practice to continue uh, throughout every budget cycle. And I think it's about changing the mindset of how we look at state government. And the legislature in the House has changed over significantly. Uh, many of our members have been here for four years or less. I believe it's 176 that we've turned over since 2006. So it's time to reiterate an initiative like this and most importantly, start off budget processes by looking where we can be more efficient, save taxpayer dollars before starting off by raising taxes. Anyone else? Somebody from up here? Uh, Mr. Dutch, comment. I'd just like to, as a former state civil servant, let you know that this is an opportunity for other civil servants. I've been with the uh, PASHE, with uh, the State Parks, as well as with the Department of Corrections. And uh, over 20 years, I was able to see a lot of uh, misuse, wasteful spending. And the employees have an opportunity right here, right now, to get a hold of the members of this committee, uh, to drop off the cards, come in and talk with us. We had a thing in uh, one of the worst wastes I've ever seen in the Department of Corrections was when we created this thing called a public safety data sheet. It was thousands of hours of overtime that were accumulated and basically all it did was duplicate the information that we already had and put it on a single sheet of paper which nobody looked at because it was out of date basically the day you wrote it. Those types of opportunities, I'm urging the state civil servants, please get a hold of us. Get a hold of the members of this committee. We will treat this seriously. We will look at the things that you identify as wasteful, as fraud, uh, abuse of the system, and we're going to be a proactive team. I just wanted to encourage, again, the state civil servants, if you're out there, if you've got things, you've got ideas, please bring them to us. Absolutely. They've got their jobs to worry about. And if uh, the administration, and it doesn't matter which party this is, this is when I first started running on this kind of stuff, it, uh, it was a Republican governor. And I saw it going on. And it doesn't matter the administration. It has more to do with the senior level bureaucrats trying to uh, create their little fiefdoms. So, so thank you. So people 
people will be protected? I mean, it would be a They certainly will with me, and I believe every one of the members on this panel. Can you leave a message we tell them? Yes. Uh, before we wrap up, Representative uh, Bloom wanted to make a quick comment on Pert. As you know, he's very involved. Uh, as he walks all the way up here, I'm going to take a moment. Uh, these are some cards that we put in that we want our constituents uh, to share information with about some of their suggestions. They don't have to put their name on it if they decide not to do that, but we do want to hear from them. Uh, we believe that the individual citizens knows how they want to be governed, and the government works best on the local level, and we want to hear from that. Representative Bloom, you want to give a comment on Pert? Thanks, Kari. Jan, I just wanted to, if you don't mind, follow up on the, the question you asked about PERC, because the key thing with PERC is Public Employers Retirement Commission. It's an independent fiscal watchdog agency set up by statute to protect the taxpayers from waste or poor decisions with respect to pension reform, which is potentially has the potential to cost taxpayers billions and billions of dollars if it's done wrong. So to eliminate PERC as being an independent agency actually puts taxpayers at greater risk of, of wasteful spending rather than saving taxpayers money. And it's interesting to note that the governor is not saying that the functions of PERC need to be changed. He's rolled those employees into other agencies, but he's taken away their independence. PERC was an independent statutorily created agency, which is there specifically to save taxpayers money. Thank you. Well, as we close out, I think those are two shining examples of the intelligence that we have on this committee, and I'm looking forward to the input. And again, I'll close out by saying Penn Save is an invite, an invite for anybody who's interested in cost savings in state government, whether you work for the state, whether you're a citizen paying taxes in the state, whether you're in the media, regardless of your party, we want to hear from you, we want to make state government work for you. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us here today, and we look forward to giving you an update in several months regarding Penn Save and where we've gone. Thank you very much. Have a great day.